When we have your attention, now we would like to start Consumer Affairs Agency, Strategic Headquarters for Frontiers of Consumer Policy International Symposium. I'm Yoko Kagiyama, moderator of this meeting. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you. As a precaution for COVID-19, the stage is set at least two meters away from the first row of the audience and equipped with acrylic boards to prevent the droplets. Speakers on the stage may not wear a face mask. We appreciate your understanding. The theme of this symposium is consumer consultation and education in the present and the post-COVID-19 in, in Asia. This is the first international symposium we have sponsored by CAE Strategic Headquarters. To share the meeting's schedule, we are going to first have a keynote speech by Mr. Hideki Kusakabe, Vice Administrative Chief of the Strategic Headquarters for Frontiers of Consumer Policy about the practical utility of educational material door to societies uh, surveyed in Tokushima. There will be two sessions of panel discussion after that where overseas guests from Southeast Asia will join us remotely. In the first part, the current status of consumer education will be presented and discussed by panelists from different countries from perspective of researchers. After having a short break, panel discussion will continue in the second part with administrative officers, officers of different countries who will discuss consumer consultation services and the trend of consumer complaints in their countries. First, on behalf of the sponsor, Mr. Shinji Inoue, Minister of State for Consumer Affairs and Food Safety, is going to say a few words. Unfortunately, because of some public business, Mr. Inoue cannot be with us today in person. He has to send his video message. Let's watch. I am Shinji Inoue, Minister of State for Consumer Affairs and Food Safety. It is indeed my great pleasure to say a few words at the International Symposium, the Strategic Headquarters for Frontiers for Consumer Policy, Consumer Affairs Agency. Distinguished researchers and administrators from Malaysia, Thailand, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Japan, and the audience, thank you very much for sharing your precious time with us today. Ever since its establishment in 2009, Consumer Affairs Agency has been taking initiatives in consumer affairs, spearheading consumer affairs policy with a mission to realize safe, secure, and resourceful society with consumer as its center. In 2018, International Conference on Consumer Policy was held in Tokushima as a side event for G20 Osaka. Thanks to Governor Izumi and Prefectural Government of Tokushima, administrators from 38 countries and regions, including those from Southeast Asia, participated to discuss international cooperation and collaboration on common policy challenges as we face on consumer affairs, as we see rapid digitalization, and we're able to see great fruits out of this event. Based on this experience, last July, Consumer Affairs Agency established the Strategic Headquarters for Frontiers of Consumer Policy in Tokushima, which will serve as a new headquarters for international affairs, including international exchanges and symposium. We believe it is necessary to promote future-looking consumer affairs-related activities to meet the needs of new era with international corporations through this strategic headquarters as the center, including the symposium as we are holding today. As we look around the world in the last year, economic and social environment has greatly changed due to COVID-19 pandemic across the world and the consequent acceleration of digitalization. That consumer-related administrative activities are faced with new challenges. 
In Southeast Asian countries, from where we have guest panelists and participants, I believe a consumer policy has become increasingly important as economic growth has led to the enhancement of living standard. We have been collaborating with the four participating countries in the area of cross-border consumer issues and consultation. So we hope that the symposium today can lead to further strengthening of our cooperation. The theme of the symposium today is on consumer consultation and education, which are directly utilized by consumers and should serve as the foundation of consumer affairs across the world. I sincerely hope that members of the panel engage in active exchanges of views so that the discussion can further promote consumer policies not just in Japan, but also in Southeast Asia as a whole. Last but not least, I hope that the symposium today will be of benefit not just for the participants, but also for the audience today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Inoue. Next, on behalf of the guest, Mr. Kaman Izumi, governor of Tokushima Prefecture, is going to say a few words. Unfortunately, Mr. Izumi also cannot attend this meeting because of some public business. We have received Mr. Izumi's video message. Here is his message. As the governor of Tokushima and the president of the National Governors Association, I'm pleased to say congratulations on the event of CAA Strategic Headquarters for Frontiers Consumer Policy International Symposium, which is operated in an innovative manner with success. I would like to uh, thank also deeply uh, Mr. Sakabe and other people of the strategic headquarters for their, their devotion to the consumer policy and the consumer education and advancement. On July 30, 2020, CAA strategic headquarters was established here in Tokushima, which was a big turning point in the history of Japan. When it comes to the governing system of Japan, all headquarters of agencies of Japanese government had been located only in Kasumigasaki, Tokyo. In the year when we started the second stage of regional revitalization, CAA strategic headquarters permanent central office function took off here in Tokushima, together with the International Consumer Policy Research Center, where we research consumer policies jointly and internationally. In the last fiscal year, uh, 2019, we had a G20 international conference on consumer policy for the first time in Japan under the co-sponsorship of CAA and its counterpart, Tokushima. And in this fiscal year, uh, despite a uh, COVID-19 pandemic, Tokushima International Consumers Forum was held in a new on-demand uh, forum with the participation of leaders from five countries, including the US, UK, and the Philippines. The discussion on new future challenges is now sent out through the world. As a legacy of the previous international symposium and the forum, we plan to have Tokushima International Consumer Forum 2021 in the next fiscal year to exchange opinions on the current situation with COVID-19 and the consumer issues and the policies of different countries in digital era and the challenges of SGDs. I close my speech by hoping participants from countries in Asia to have fruitful discussion on new customers uh, consumer challenges and the prescriptions, and to offer new perspective of consumer policies for both with corona and after corona eras from Asia to the rest of the world. Congratulations again. Thank you. 
Thank you, Governor Yuzumi. Next comes a keynote speech. The speaker is Mr. Hideki Kusakabe, Vice Administrative Chief of the Strategic Headquarters for Frontiers of Consumer Policy, CAA. The title is a survey by using the educational material door to society in Tokushima. Please join me and welcome Mr. Kusakabe. Thank you very much. I am Kusakabe, Vice Administrative Chief of the Strategic Headquarters for Frontiers of Consumer Policy. We have the uh, presentation materials both in English and in English, so please reuse the materials of your preferred language. Here in Tokushima, we have a classroom education for three years using Door to Society as a booklet for the use of the class, and I'd like to share with you what we have been able to gain through this. First about the background, in April 2020, the age of adulthood will be lowered from 20 to 18. So high school students will be responsible for the contract at age of 18. So the consumer education is becoming even more important. So we have prepared in collaboration with Ministry of Education for the textbook and education materials called Door to Society. And we have discussed, decided to make sure that this will be used in all schools. And in Tokushima, we use this for all high schools. And with the collaboration of the four agencies, CAA, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Justice, and Final Services Agency, we have committed to use this for consumer education. And in all 55 senior high schools, the classroom education using door to society is implemented. So we have about 6,500 students each year from senior high school, and for three years, we conducted a survey of those who have received the classroom not only before and after the class, uh, but uh, and when you are in the second year or also in the third year, we survey to see as a follow-up as to how much the penetration of the education we can find. So let me share with you the results of our survey. You can see we have 6,500 uh, students. In the second and third year, we have less number because those who received the education the previous year may not respond the following year. And last year, at around this time of the year, we were unable to carry out the survey. So we have less number of students answering the survey. And these are the questions asked. It is about the awareness and the knowledge. These are 12 questions we asked, and we had 12 quizzes. And we also have a questionnaire about the consumer awareness. Every year, for three years, we conducted the survey. Now, talking about the knowledge, there are 12 questions. And we took the average grade before the class and after the class. We see that the rate of right answer increases after class. And after one year, there's some decline. And after the second year, there's a slight decline. So the knowledge seems to be retained. These are some examples of the questions we asked. And some representative questions are shown here out of the 12 questions we asked. The first question, when is the contract concluded when shopping in a store? The right answer, and this may not be common to all countries, but in Japan, this is when the store staff member says, OK, I got your order. It's not that when you receive the goods or when you make the payment. And then, I bought a product in store, but I did not use it. I want to handle this, and what would be the legal way? And legally, the store does not have to accept the returns. That's the right question. If you have a receipt within one year, you will be able to return it, or if you are not opening up a package, you don't have, you cannot get it returned. Well, some retailers, as a service to customers, they may accept the returns under those conditions, but legally speaking, the store does not have to accept the returns. 
And if you look at the percentage of the right answers with regards to the timing of contract conclusion, the right uh, answer was very small in percentage, but after the class, it goes up. But one year later or two years later, you can see that uh, there's no is retained. And with regards to the cancellation, in principle, right after the class, you have high rate of right answer, but in the second and third year, you have less percentage. This may be the case that in your everyday life, you are not seeing this kind of situation. And this may be the reason why the right of the correct answer is small. Next. If you bought a T-shop online, you don't like it, can you return it utilizing the cooling off system? And the answer is that uh, you cannot use the cooling off system because it is on online. And so what happens is that uh, when you have uh, a door to door sales, uh, you would be able to exercise this, but if you're buying on your own, you will not be able to exercise this cooling off system. And before the class, about 35% say that this is not possible, and one after the class, the right answer is higher. Uh, but you can see uh, this uh, knowledge retained. The next question is about is there any a number that you can call when you want to get an advice on consumer affairs? We emphasize on this one A to E have this batch. Right after the class, the right answer percentage is high, but the number declines. The next, uh, I'd like to go through this quickly. This is about the consumer awareness. Overall, before and after the class or after a year or two, there's not much difference in terms of the awareness, although we have slightly higher percentage right after the class. If you purchase something, you cannot get the returns and refunds in principle. Are you always aware of this? And if you say that uh, you can see some increase right after the class, but not much. It seems like uh, we cannot say that awareness is heightened. Maybe because uh, those students in the high school era, and you may become uh, very cautious in terms of um, your shopping behavior. And when asked if you are able to do this uh, all the time, sometimes people become less uh, reliable. And uh, do you use the terms of the service uh, when you shop online? And not many people will say they will always check the terms of the service. There's not much change in terms of the percentage of those who are of high awareness. Uh, people become uh, more cautious, I would say. Uh, next, uh, if you have any problems, uh, do you contact the business operator? And again, overall, uh, not many people will say they will contact the business operator, but there's not much difference in terms of such percentage before and after the class. Uh, next, uh, if you have a snowballing increase of your uh, borrowing, do you consult with consumer your center? And again, there's a slight increase after the class, uh, but after a year or two, the same students may retain the same amount of awareness. I'm going to skip this. This is very busy, sorry. Uh, these are all the questions and the answers and the percentage. The result of the survey is that in the second year survey, in some cases, there are some decline in the percentage right answer, but compared to before the class, in the second and third year, it seems like uh, they have higher rate of right answer, so there may be some benefit of the classroom education. With regards to refunds and uh, cancellation, this is uh, very important as uh, the age of adulthood is uh, lowered. Uh, but on day-to-day -day service, uh, you, can, you can return or cancel your purchase. So this may not be completely matching your real debt life uh, situation, then this may be the reason why the percentage of right answer is not very high. And uh, like the contract or the refund, you had a lower percentage of the right answer, 
and after the class, you may have higher percentage, but it declines because their knowledge was not well established, and people's awareness may not have changed greatly during the last three years. So what we can say is that there's less uh, retention in terms of the understanding about the contract, although the right answer is increases after the class. So not many people continue to retain that knowledge. And at the age of 18 or 19, they are considered as an adulthood, and they need to be aware and about their consumer. In terms of their awareness, it is the reflects their day-to-day shopping behavior. So just a small classroom education may not lead to a complete change of the behavior. The consultation with the Consumer Affairs Center or be cautious of new problems as consumer. These are very important things. And so when uh, looking to the further education, these are the points that we need to emphasize. So this was a very brief explanation about the results of the classroom education. Uh, we had uh, this uh, education for three years, and we conducted the survey for all the students who received the class. And uh, in the second or third year, we also were able to check what happened to them after receiving the class. So it means that uh, the class education was meaningful, but we should not be complacent. That, I think, is what we learned uh, from this survey. So we will need to continue uh, to give uh, new insights into the consumer education in the future based on this survey. Uh, with this, I'd like to end my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kusakabe. The next is panel discussion part one. We are going to have this session to discuss the theme, the role of consumer education in the age of COVID-19. The panelist includes Associate Professor, Naruto University of Education, and the Senior Visiting Research Fellow with the Strategic Headquarters for Frontiers of Consumer Policy, CAA, Professor Yuka Sakamoto. And uh, remotely, from Malaysia, Dr. On Tse Chin, Senior Lecturer, Faculty of Law, University of Malaya. Uh, having me today, uh, Watashiwa uh, Ong from Malaysia. And uh, from uh, Thailand, lecturer, Faculty of Law, Tamasat University, Dr. Um, Paga Atich Apkin. Uh, sorry, good, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for for inviting me for this uh, this uh, presentation for the for the conference thank you and uh, from vietnam lecturer faculty of law the university of economics danang university dr trung huang ga na sorry dr huan na Could you turn on your microphone? It seems that uh, that's in the mute. Please unmute the microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yes. Hi. Um, um, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me this chance to can sell with all of you uh, about Vietnam consumer education especially in the um, COVID-19 crisis. It's very important, the issue now. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And the moderator is um, Associate Professor, Faculty of Law, Kyoto University, Antonius Kareskos. 
Mr. Kusakabe, today's keynote speaker, will also join panel discussion of both, both session one and session two. Here, I'd like to hand it over to Professor Karaiskos. Thank you. I am Kara Iskos from Kyoto University. In this session, following the keynote presentation, we are going to talk about the role of consumer education amid the COVID-19 pandemic. We have the panelists from Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. We are going to hear the current status of the consumer education of the respective country. And with the increase of the e-commerce, how can we eliminate the digital divide and the role of consumer education for that? And these are the topics we like to discuss today. And let me first give you a brief uh, presentation. I will talk about the role of consumer education amid the COVID-19 pandemic. I will have introductory general remarks, first of all. These are the topics I'm going to cover. I will first talk about consumer education in Japan, the COVID-19 pandemic and consumer education, and consumer education in EU and the Asian model. The home economics is the origin of consumer education here in Japan. And consumer policy has shifted from protection to supporting self-reliance in the 21st century. But this does not mean that the governments no longer need to implement protective measures. And consumers are now getting more a positive way of support instead of being negative in terms of giving the support. In 2004, the Consumer Protection Fundamental Act was revised to the Consumer Basic Act. And as you can see, the consumers' rights have been clearly set forth. And in 2012, the Act on Promotion of Consumer Education was enacted. And as you can see in Article 1, paragraph, Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Act, we have uh, this uh, definition. The consumer education is to support the self-reliance as individuals. And as a member of society, self-reliance means in terms of active participation in the creation of a better market and society. That means when it comes to consumer education, it is, is to promote the active participation in the creation of the meta market and society. So this promotion of consumer education act is a rare kind of education and though that we have in in Japan, and from a global perspective, it is rare that this kind of act forms and stipulates the creation of a better market in society through consumer education. So this is the current status of the consumer education. And we have practical consumer education for those receiving education at school. We also have various opportunities to provide consumer education at various the local level, and these are some of the examples that you can see. Now the question is how the consumer education was impacted by COVID-19 pandemic in Japan. The first, the consumer education realized that consumer citizen society it was revisited and emphasized. And the importance of consumer citizen society was once again realized it's with the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of the features of the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent consumers that you need to have skills on the digital domain and you need to have improved the skills for digital society, you have to have a critical thinking and you also need to de determine the truth. And when it comes to critical thinking, you have lots of information in the digital world. 
and it's important that you need to have an insight into the identification of the truth. If you look at the consumer education in EU, there are some major elements. First of all, the materials for education is provided. This is prepared by EU, and it is utilized for free for consumer education. And there are competitions to consumer education, there are awards and certification, and related incentives and cooperation with local communities. And uh, awards and certification lead to related incentives. And these are some examples which you can refer to. And this is the survey that I participate in conducting. In EU, there is a consumer education model. On the other hand, in Asia, it's the question is whether we have an Asian model. Is it necessary and is it important or is it possible? And personally, as I was mentioned, Asian countries are important partners for trade, and we have some common challenges of consumer affairs, and there are some common challenges in consumer education. So it is important to set an Asia model, and I believe it is possible. And uh, the today's symposium, uh, I hope, would serve as the foothold for uh, the Asian model. And I should be looking forward to the presentations of the members of the panel. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we will have some presentation uh, from the panelists. And first, uh, from Naruto University, I'd like to invite Dr. Sakamoto for the presentation. I'm a Sakamoto Naruto University of Education. Thank you very much for the introduction. I would like to just talk about the consumer education in Japan with a focus on digitalization. I think that may be rather a more practical aspect of what Professor Karaik has presented right now. First, this one. This is a kind of a roadmap for consumer education prepared by CAA. And using this image map, you can tell what kind of learning or knowledge and skills that each consumer is expected to have at the different life stage. And then originally, well, uh, what kind of a content uh, should be just uh, taught for each life stage that is uh, just uh, described in more detail here, but I would like to focus on the uh, people who are subject uh, to this kind of uh, uh, consumer education. So who are involved in this kind of uh, consumer education that may be just uh, summarized here. Of course, a student from elementary school to a high school, that means a school should be the uh, entity which need to play a very important and a major role. And at the university levels, perhaps the uh, consumer education may be limited to, to some uh, certain uh, disciplines. And uh, some workplaces, yes, they may provide some uh, consumer education or uh, courses and the classes as well, but uh, that is not yet uh, enough. And then more general uh, consumer education, of course, its classes are, are held in different locations with the expected audience of a wide range of ages of people. However, it seems that the, uh, particularly the elderly people or older age of people uh, tend to uh, more to this kind of uh, uh, consumer education courses and classes. Uh, however, much younger adults need to be uh, participate and then uh, acquire uh, the knowledge and the skill about uh, consumption. So particularly, uh, parents with younger children need to just uh, have this kind of opportunity to learn about the consumption affairs. And here, this is about uh, education, uh, consumer education, particularly at uh, uh, schools in Japan. And uh, particularly, what kind of things are taught uh, at the uh, uh, different uh, subjects, particularly uh, the home economics uh, start uh, from the age of 11, and that means uh, fifth grade, and the social studies from nine years old, and that means uh, third grade of elementary school. So these two subjects are the subjects uh, who may be uh, more important in uh, consumer education. And then, uh, 
moral uh, practice. And that may be another one poss possibly. But uh, in the home economics, uh, the students from elementary school to high school are taught to uh, taught about uh, how to uh, manage and use the money and the sales contract and then the uh, sustainable uh, consumption um, with the different uh, levels of uh, difficulties. And then uh, in the uh, uh, social studies, of course, they need to learn the mechanism of the society and then uh, consumption life and others as well, and then uh, perhaps the uh, home economics may be more practical. And then uh, how to uh, manage the money and then uh, how to do the shopping. Actually, that is included in the uh, government uh, guideline of the curriculum from 1947. And there are consumers' uh, uh, rights and the responsibility that is uh, incorporated into the curriculum uh, from 2000. And in 2022, the age of adulthood is reduced from 20 years old to 18 years old. old. And then nowadays, really, uh, the focus is more on the uh, sales contract, particularly for young people. And uh, uh, in school, yes, there are some other opportunities uh, 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 that a student can learn outside of the school. Uh, for example, there is a class of integrated uh, studies, and then uh, they are given the opportunities to just pick up uh, some uh, subject and then learn uh, more deep. And uh, that uh, would include uh, research and hands-on activities as well. And then club uh, activities, activities or some special event of school. Some schools uh, just uh, uh, um, include uh, consumer education in these kind of special opportunities as well. And then nowadays, uh, uh, education uh, opportunities or learning opportunities uh, may be more open uh, to the public. And then uh, sometimes I get the teachers are invited uh, to school uh, to just uh, give a lectures to students. For example, uh, dental care or uh, drug uh, uh, abuse and the disaster uh, management. And then uh, nowadays uh, we are going to have the change of age of adulthood to 18 years old. So the more and more, I guess, the speakers are invited to school to uh, give lectures to students. And uh, as you see here, uh, through school life, uh, there may be many, many opportunities uh, which are provided uh, of them to learn uh, the cons uh, consumption affairs. However, uh, what actually uh, I teach uh, at the present moment, uh, that is the result of the survey uh, actually, uh, this survey was conducted uh, through the internet. And the uh, question is, uh, uh, have you learned this kind of thing uh, at the school? The um, label indication and the fraudulent business and others. More than 6% of the students say that, uh, yes, they have learned these things in their school life. However, uh, the sales method and then consumers' rights and responsibilities and contract, the uh, response is only uh, the 40%. And then the uh, money management, actually, that is rather all the subject, but uh, still 20% or lower. And then the 20% of the student just answered they have never uh, been taught this kind of things. So even if uh, the uh, this kind of a subject is uh, just a set up in the curriculum, sometimes actually there is uh, no uh, actual classes where uh, students uh, can learn these kind of things. And that means that education, uh, consumer education, that there is a lot of things we have to improve and implement. Here, uh, this is about the challenges toward digitalization. Yes, a digital uh, uh, transaction, e-commerce, is a very quick and uh, easy and convenient. That is a very good convenience from the consumer's perspective. On the other hand, uh, they spend only a little time to think about the uh, sales or purchase activities that they would uh, make. And then many a part of the mechanisms is in a black box, the movies and the images and the text. There is a lot of the things, but uh, that is more inducive and uh, seducive psychologically and uh, uh, just uh, draw uh, more easily attention uh, of uh, the audience. And uh, it may be at the risk of increasing the number who, number of uh, just consumers who, who do not uh, think about the uh, potential purchase uh, good enough before actual purchase. So 
the, uh, the uh, information uh, need to be just uh, thought about uh, critically. And uh, uh, the decision-making power, all these uh, things uh, may be still the challenges towards the future. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sakamoto. Now from Malaysia, Dr. Wong from the University of Malay, please. Konnichiwa. Okay, uh, very good afternoon uh, to having me here. Uh, basically, I will actually talk about our consumer education in Malaysia and what are the challenges we face during this COVID-19 and also uh, what we can do, you know, as a, a community, uh, international community. With this pandemic, we realize uh, now uh, uh, we are in one world, right? Uh, so one affect another, so we cannot uh, look into this uh, differently. It's uh, very interesting a presentation uh, by uh, Japan, by uh, a professor from Japan and regarding this uh, education, consumer education uh, in your country. But for us in Malaysia, uh, can I have next slide, please? Next. Uh, yes. Okay, for Malaysia, uh, <laughs> very sadly, unfortunately, I would like to say we do not have a formal uh, consumer education I say there is not a subject which is called a consumer education right so so uh, in school and high school level they also none but of course we have other programs just like uh, it is a site uh, that is a talk given in the school there's other activities programs so who actually involve our children uh, for awareness for, for this consumer education program in Malaysia right? So uh, the major part we can see the really what I call it formal education. Formal education, it means that you actually studied about it, right? It is in the tertiary uh, education, which is a different discipline. That's uh, not just for law. For law, is still a, a very cold subject. I think only very few person like me and my colleagues are doing, right? So there is other, which is uh, uh, sociology uh, uh, discipline and also other management discipline and, and finance, meaning that they will do uh, this particular study. Right. So despite that, we have our education, of course, is through uh, involvement with all the uh, ministry. Right. We have different different part of ministry taking different roles okay, in our country. So various initiatives by this government and also NGOs. Okay. Uh, basically, we are this informal uh, kind of education. Uh, later, I'll go into detail what this. So for Malaysia, who are, 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 are what you call responsible for this consumer education and awareness program, they are the major one, which is the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Effect. So this, uh, they have the, uh, this ministry has uh, uh, taken care of the role of this uh, particular consumer complaint, any consumer issue, and the consumer law itself and the framework is uh, governed by this ministry. So apart from that, we have a uh, Ministry of Education. Right, Ministry of Education, they are through the different subject model, which is uh, what is called, uh, we have this moral study, right? They will slip in this uh, consumer protection a little bit by this uh, moral studies and others, uh, uh, for example, religion study, but not as uh, uh, tighter as consumer education, right? And currently also we have this uh, communication and multimedia ministry, okay, who concentrate on this uh, data, particularly at the age of data. That is... Uh, this role of education of consumer is uh, uh, pretty new, right? Uh, when there is the uh, internet access and the click, they do uh, uh, went out to the school and the university to uh, educate the student about uh, the responsibility in clicking, in posting, and also currently we have our uh, reason ordinance about fake news, right? To cater about this COVID nineteen fake news, right? Now these are uh, uh, this ongoing is on the road. And of course, uh, another one with the current situation of COVID is our Ministry of Health. Okay, how the Ministry of Health came in, uh, particularly in the information regarding this uh, COVID-19, okay, as uh, I mean, maybe I would like to share. Uh, in our country, we have this app called My Sajatra, so they will have all the information sharing to the apps. And it is uh, compulsory for you to go to the store to scan, you have to have this uh, app with you. So uh, then again, uh, that is another issue here with uh, talking about um, privacy, right? And also data and this app application, right? So these are a few various ministry are responsible for, for our consumer education. Uh, next, please, next slide. So for the ma a major uh, ministry, next slide, please, next. So uh, for the our major uh, 
ministry is this uh, domestic trade and consumer affairs. Okay, what they do, we also name it KPDN HEP uh, in Malay Bahasa, right? So uh, what they do, we have this uh, consumer education and awareness program, right? Under this program, they actually have trade structure. This involves more of the uh, primary and secondary uh, school children, right? So we have a student uh, consumer movement, they call it uh, GPS. We have a website, they will have uh, uh, information about uh, consumer and, and to share knowledge. But of course, then again, uh, it is an uh, initiative, right? But still, I do not see they, they are not very active uh, because this is target uh, for children and, and, and the high school teenage, right? We have a school consumer club, but it's not every single school are compulsory to have this. It's just like an activity club still having it, right? They are sharing, they will invite talks, uh, they were sharing information about consumer and also in the tertiary level for this education and awareness program, we have this uh, student discount card which is called My uh, One Malaysia Kasim. This is also introduced, I think, 2018. Okay, all the, uh, uh, our higher education uh, 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 students, they, uh, they have this particular card, which they can get discount. Uh, they can uh, provide uh, information for about consumer because they are students. That is one of the way is going uh, uh, to help our uh, 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 vulnerable consumer, which is uh, their income uh, scope because they are students, right? They might have problem on this. So, but from that, we also have this, uh, what you call consumer protection program, okay? They are the one responsible for the consumer affair and also law and policy review. So, they, we have this uh, secretary for National Consumer uh, Advisory Council, okay? They are also responsible uh, for this uh, program. So, in terms of the uh, law and also review. Okay, uh, apart from that, we have consumerism movement development program. Uh, these are the one we're talking about uh, more into a community engagement and also to the society. We have a uh, Rakan uh, uh, KPDN HUV, Rakan in Malaysia, it means uh, friends of uh, uh, this ministry who are voluntarily uh, monitoring the prices or uh, any changes in business conduct, you know, they can report to the ministry. Of course, this is a voluntary basis, it's, a, it's an activity to the program. And also we have this uh, National Consumer Movement Council, right? They discuss about consumerism issue, right? implementation of the programs uh, in activities in school, in also in the community, in, uh, for example, uh, sh uh, supermarket, shopping, and all this, right? We have also come down to the state level, we have the state consumer movement. Right? For the audience relation, we have 13 states, right? So all the states, they have their own uh, state officer and also state consumer movement. Like they do uh, go out to conduct uh, education and awareness plan. So, and we have district as well. Re district is target to the more, what you call rural area. Malaysia, we do have certain rural, uh, very rural area on the district. So we have this uh, district uh, coordinator, we call it district consumer movement, right? So of course, uh, they have also uh, with this uh, movement of uh, consumer in the state, right? On the state level, because different state, they have, might have different issues. Uh, in terms of water, uh, utilities, right? These are uh, formulation of is the state issue, right? And also certain state, they may have a different uh, uh, infrastructure problem. So these are in the state issue. They also responsible uh, into receiving complaint and also uh, investigate in the uh, uh, district level, right? So they also have this uh, organization called SQUAD. Another one I would like to say is our uh, consumer association and organization. They are, I think, uh, the most active one in Malaysia, right? They have, we have a lot of different groups. Of course, uh, this, uh, uh, later on, we will share with you the next slide. Uh, they, they have different, different groups uh, or, or uh, campaigning for consumer rights and consumer education, right? Another one, we have district assistance for consumer affairs. This is only started in 2019. Of course, this is to enhance these uh, consumerism activities and program uh, on the district area, particularly the rural district. We have our rural district, which is, I think everyone heard about that news, right? Uh, during COVID-19 time, our student, our, our uh, university student, uh, Viviana, had to go and climb a tree to get internet access. I suppose that become a big, you know, issues, right? Uh, that is in terms of the district level. Right, we do have these uh, activities and those uh, NGOs uh, uh, and uh, through the various uh, ministry. Uh, can I have a next slide, please? Next slide. 
Next slide. Yeah. Okay, this is basically our NGO. So I would like to say our NGO is the one who started all this consumer movement since 1960. So they are uh, remain very active. They are the one pushing for the law and regulation and everything. Right. We have the Federation of Malaysian Consumer Association and we have our Education and Research Association for Consumer, which is uh, doing research in particular area. Right. We also have a uh, National Consumer Complaints Center. Right, we have a particular uh, religion. We have Muslim Consumer Association of Malaysia, and also we have Cyber Consumer Association, who are concerned with uh, this uh, cyber knowledge and also uh, 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 privacy. You know, uh, infringement on privacy issue and content uh, uh, usage. Right, uh, in this, these are basically NGOs and civil society who are involved in. Uh, uh, what I call enhancing or helping education, our consumer education, right? So uh, they also handling complaints. And most of the time, uh, we found that uh, we found that uh, on the research, uh, we found that uh, consumer they uh, they do not uh, like to go to the uh, government, uh, uh, what you call uh, authority, which we have the ministry, right? They were uh, more prone to go to this uh, this NGO, right? Because they are more uh, uh, con uh, civil society and they are more close to their problems, right? So that is one of the issue that uh, why with our minister ministry, yes, they have all the trick they are doing all this, but then again, uh, there is a capacity uh, issue, right? Uh, from the government part, and also we have uh, uh, the consumer awareness, uh, right? So so they. Uh, feel reluctant when they when they you know uh, they still have that idea when they go to ministry or, or certain approach uh, government office, right? So the NGOs have taken a, a lot of parts in doing all this job, and also they are the one which I would say I will be uh, very proud of. Is without them also we would not have uh, what our consumer protection today, right? Uh, next slide, next yeah next slide. Uh, yeah, for consumer protection, uh, because I actually have more, but uh, I have given a short time to speak, so I, I will quickly wrap it up. For current issue of this uh, COVID-19 pre and post, uh, during we are at the pandemic time, right? So there is increased, I would like to say, there's increased vulnerability of consumer. In terms of you are being locked down, right? You are rely on the internet, like what we are having now, and Zoom. Like the issue on, on uh, e-commerce particularly, Right, this is the increased vulnerability into of uh, information, uh, uh, pressure, pressures. Uh, everyone have this pressure even during lockdown, right? Particular uh, supply as well, because certain supply, just like we say, Malaysia, we have this Viviana who actually climbed a tree to get internet, right? The uh, vulnerability into redress because now they don't go and complain, right? Yes, we do. Uh, we our Ministry of this uh, cabinet HDB consumerism, they do have online. Uh, WhatsApp, you know, they have this uh, uh, channel for people to uh, receive complaint. But actually, uh, uh, if you ask the awareness, mm -hmm. very few of them actually want to uh, know about this channel, right? So that we impact a uh, uh, great impact on this vulnerability. I would say this vulnerable of consumer increase because of uh, the COVID-19, particularly uh, uh, in terms of uh, this protective equipment, the mask you buy, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, sanitizer you buy, right? I would like to say that uh, uh, and, and supply of utilities because uh, uh, they are everyone is stuck at home. The utilities usage, right? Uh, the first, I think in Malaysia, our issue is the first uh, months of our uh, uh, lockdown, which we call it movement control order, right? So they have a rise in this, uh, what you call issue of uh, utilities bill, right? So that is a big issue on that. And some also have a problem with uh, supply of water and this basic utility. So apart from that, uh, we know there is a consumer issue on uh, uh, flight, flight cancellation that is beginning of the COVID. But currently, I don't see that is any resolve. Yes, there is a, a certain voice to say that, oh, the flight, uh, uh, what you call airline company, they should actually be responsible. But then again, you don't see the full refund, right? They can only give you a, a, a replacement flight, but you, no one know when you're going to fly. And the package, uh, holiday package, right? Financial services, yes, uh, with the uh, coming, I mean, Malaysia, we have this monitoring for six month uh, loan uh, late repayment. So you do not need to pay six months. Then again, people are questioning how about uh, our interest rate, right? All these things. So the bank is not going to easy for you. That can only, the, well, our government can only impose it for six months, for the beginning six months. Then again, uh, it, is, it, it is, yes, I will say that it is uh, all 
situation, we increase this vulnerability, particularly cyber security. And currently, uh, uh, we being locked down, people reluctant to go out, right? You only get your necessity to online channel. Or this online channel, uh, particular the issue with cyber security, uh, uh, e wallet financing, you know, your data and the contents, you know. We even have, uh, uh, I don't, we have a problem like uh, that is a chance, uh, they go to e commerce by collecting uh, uh, what you call donation for COVID 19 fund, right? Which is uh, something against the law, which our government also do not know how to cater this with, right? So there is a, a lot of uh, problem with this. Then, of course, uh, when we talk about uh, basic supplies and we talk about sustainability. So everyone is talking about uh, have, wearing face masks and uh, using hand sanitizer. There is no, in Malaysia, I will quite say that I will say that there is a no plan for how to uh, uh, cater with this uh, uh, use, waste, right? Uh, this, this, this common waste of face masks and rubber gloves and, you know, Yes, there is a very small society and, 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 and trying to do their uh, job is encounter this issue. But then again, yeah, I can give you the figure for one platform okay, that is within just uh, two weeks of our movement control order lockdown. We have 1.8 million hand sanitizers sold, right? And also 800 boxes of the face mask being sold from only one platform, uh, one e-commerce platform. So the quality of the, the mask itself, yes, the authority are trying to uh, educate people, oh, it's three layer mask, you have to be like this, but they have not very hard to control particular and this e-commerce you can purchase now anywhere from the world, right? About the quality of this mask and the sanitizer quality of this and how about this, our uh, uh, low income groups, low income consumer, right? Being that they don't have a channel to complain. So for them, uh, uh, Currently, uh, we have a problem economically. So if we have anything, it's better to do nothing, right? So I would like to say in this current situation, the vulnerability of consumer are increased tremendously. And as, an, as a, a, a global nation as a whole, right, we think we need to act uh, together, right? So, so it is required a serious, uh, uh, following my slide, we require a serious commitment, not just nationally, internationally. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Malaysia, we have our Prime Minister rolling out this economic recovery plan, right? We have spent 35 million on this plan, but I have not seen anything on consumer education. I have not seen anything that is going to help people in, 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 in terms of uh, consumer protection, right? Uh, they have the core objective of this uh, uh, very, uh, what you call, huge uh, economic plan, which is saying that uh, we empower the people, for pair business and uh, stimulate the economy. But empowering people, I will include consumer protection, empower uh, consumer with the knowledge and the basic needs and the basics requirement, right? So uh, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, in Malaysia, we are, uh, for consumer protection, I still think that we are very early stage and, and, and it's not a lot of people who are actually concerned, particular with the uh, vulnerable group. So not just vulnerable, I think now uh, uh, everyone, yeah, even you and me currently, we're using Zoom, our vulnerability is there. So how do we cater this problem? Still currently is at the stage of uh, educational level, right? It's a uh, research area, uh, level, to trying to find a way to, to, uh, to take this issue, right? So uh, I would like to say, yes, this, this global movement and this symposium, I hope we can uh, uh, share our knowledge and, and come up with something, right? Uh, to, to actually provide a better consumer protection. Okay, so yeah, that's all. I think I finished my 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 <laughs> my my short uh, 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 what you call presentation, right? So uh, uh, any any how do I move on? Do I uh, take question or can I stop here? So I think we will uh, discuss more later on during our discussion, right? Thank you, everyone, and uh, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ong. The next one uh, from uh, Thomas Hart University, uh, Dr. Amapaka Atesha Apikun. So, Dr. Please. Okay, thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to participate in this uh, symposium. I'm Amapaka from Thomas Hart University. Today, I would like to share my view about consumer education in Thailand. And 
I think that uh, Thailand has a uh, uh, same uh, maybe same problem, a similar problem as happened in Malaysia. And for the, uh, the uh, okay, next slide, please. The constitution of Thailand has recognized the right of consumer and the needs for protecting such rights and the role of consumer associations. Moreover, consumer protection policy and laws have been established in Thailand more than 40 years. Today, we have various priests of legislation and public authority concerning consumer protection in different aspects. Can you change the slide, please? Okay, the consumer education is also the essential mechanism empowering consumers to be able taking care of themselves and to avoid the consumer complaints. Today, I would like to focus my presentation on consumer education by starting with the law of public authority. And then I will talk about the role and the experience of the consumer associations before mentioning some challenges. Next slide, please. As I have mentioned that Thailand has several public authority responsible for consumer protection policy. Its authority has conducted the consumer education in a similar pattern. For example, under the Act of Consumer Protection, the Consumer Protection Board has responsible, among other things, to promote consumer education and research. And to respond to this task, before the COVID-19 crisis, the Consumer Protection Board, with the help of the Ministry of Education, had put in place the knowledge about consumer protection as the part of uh, the curriculum in some school. And in 2014, there were more than 7,000 students participating in this program. Why I found that the Office of National Broadcasting and Telecommunication Commission and the Food and Duck Administration also organized this type of training for younger generation as well. However, this form of education may not be applied during the pandemic because of the lockdown. And besides the training curriculum program for younger generation in school, Thailand has a special mechanism that also benefits consumer education in its local community. We call this local volunteer as the village health volunteer teams. And this project is done by the Ministry of Public Health. The health volunteer have essential role for advising and educating people in their local community to take concern on health issues, including of uh, product safety, food safety, or duck safety. And today, there are about 1 million health volunteers registered with the Ministry of Public Health. Uh, the health volunteers are trained before working as the, support, as the supporter of the health officers. They can also give some advice, some consult about uh, some specific disease. And during the COVID-19 crisis, the, the health volunteer are the person who monitor the situation of the space or of the virus in their area. They give some information about the virus and teach people in their area the way to prevent illness. The network of health illness is regarded as the essential mechanism to control the outbreak of coronavirus in Thailand. And another method of consumer education applied it to empower the consumer is the distribution of information or give some advice to consumers. I have found that all of the consumer organizations in Thailand today create the channel for informed consumer online. For example, the, the consumer protection office usually reports some news and publish some article mm -hmm. about the right of the consumer and how to deal with the case in the website. The Food and Duck Authority announced the name or duck or cosmetic or food that are unsafe via the website and the mobile application. And moreover, several organizations use social media as 
Facebook or the Line application to this distribute uh, to to distribute information to consumer. Uh, using social media to inform is very efficient to to educate consumer as it's fast and very cheap. By contrast. The existence of online fake news is not only a big trouble for consumer, but also for the business operator, especially in the pandemic crisis. And for the next slide, please. Besides the method of consumer education mentioned earlier, creating or supporting the consumer network is also a tool for improved consumer knowledge. Consumer education cannot be done by only the public authority. We now are focusing on the role of consumer association. Can you change to the next slide? Next slide, please. There are nowadays more than 200 organizations in Thailand. I have learned that some of them are originated setting by consumers who are the victim of the rights violation. The willing to run or participate in the consumer association sometimes inspired by the experience of the victim themselves. It might be said that consumer dispute or consumer claim raise awareness about the consumer protection in Thailand. However, at the beginning, some of the consumer association has been not uh, sorry, had not been the expert, or sometimes they had no efficient, sufficient knowledge and skill to fight for consumer protection issue. Certain associations need time for learning and developing themselves before guiding and assisting other consumers. The process of exchange some knowledge, some skill, or some experience amongst the Consumer Association Network is also one sort of consumer uh, education that happened in Thailand. Nowadays, there are many associations that are gain more experience and their staff are really uh, 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 strong, uh, stronger. Uh, the development are evident by the bigger number of cases they decide to adopt. Uh, I would like to show one example of the association. The Foundation of Consumer or FCC is one of the strongest consumer associations, association in Thailand. And one of its successful projects is the publication of the monthly consumer magazine we call that magazine, uh, the name of the magazine is Smart Buy. The Smart Buy is, is a unique magazine, provides some various contents to consumers, such as how to choose goods, how to choose service. Or uh, this, uh, this magazine also updates some relevant news for consumers. Additionally, this magazine reports the result of product testing conduct by the reliable and dependent lab. Some examples of the product testing include electrical appliance, cosmetics, service, food, IT tools. And today, the Smart Buy magazine is also available online. And at the beginning of the outbreak of the COVID-19 in Thailand, the Smart Buy magazine published the result of the sanitizer hand and, and showing that certain products did not meet the standards specified because they contain less alcohol as they mentioned. Then one of the manufacturers of such unqualified products did instill a case against the FCC to the court because of that report. The FCC defend that the test run by the reliable expert and the FFC has no conflict of interest for doing that test. Today, this case was settled by the 
mediation. The manufacturer has tried to prove the quality of its product by sending by by sending them to re examinate with the other lab. And the FCC have accepted the new test results, but the FCC still confirmed that the, 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 the result of the previous test is flawless. I have noticed that today some business operator or manufacturer don't want to have any conflict with the FCC because this association is very popular among the consumers. In case that the products are reported by the FCC as not qualified as most companies don't blame the FCC directly. By contrast, they ask for some explanation or some recommendation from, for them to improve their products. Even though everything seems is the light spot, in my opinion, in my ex, uh, uh, because of my experience, there are no other consumer association which is as powerful or have enough potion, potential to deal with the consumer protection issue at the FCC. Most associations have the same problem with a lack of resources and experience. They still do need support. The next slide, please. To conclude, I would like to mention some challenges. The first one is the, the use of social media. This tool is very efficient, but we have seen that it can also disrupt the consumer or the business in some cases. The second one, during the pandemic, the consumer behavior changed substantially. Lockdown creates the new economic crisis. We need to learn and inspect the new kind of problem to deal with them. One good example, in Thailand today, lots of people face with the financial problems because of the lockdown. We have seen lots of spam tech about the personal loan, which are illegal or unfair. Some people become the victim of chaining policy scam. We need to control this problem immediately by educating consumers. For uh, the third challenge is the problem of aging society and aging gap. Thailand has more senior people who have less knowledge and familiarity with the new technologies. Our new targets for consumer education today become the senior group instead of younger generation, in my opinion. We now have to decide the model for, of consumer education that are fairly to the seniors. And the last point is concerning the establishment of consumer congress or consumer council in Thailand. We start clear this year, as I have mentioned that there are several associations for consumer, but most of them need to be empowered. The Consumer Council is regarded as a new mechanism for promoting the consumer protection and enhance the right to participate. The law guarantee is independent by stating that this new organization cannot be intervened by the public authority or business operator, while this council will be funded by the state. The emergence of new council creates new hope for some consumer as associations, including me. I wish that we will have some new project for developing consumer skill, which can suddenly respond to the new problem or the problem that I mentioned above. Okay, now I finished my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we'd like to invite Dr. Son Penga. We only have less than 10 minutes to conclude this panel. Hope that you are punctual. Thank you. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Now I would like to share with of you uh, some issue about Vietnam consumer education in the COVID-19 crisis. Yes, next, next slide. Uh, my uh, 
my uh, presentations uh, would have uh, three contents. Uh, the first about the impact of the COVID-19 crisis, and the second um, about the uh, action of the Vietnam government and the other organization. And uh, the uh, three, we, I would like to talk about the um, is, uh, important and the challenge of the educating consumer in Vietnam. Yeah, next slide, please. Yes, the, the first, I would like to talk about the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on Vietnam consumers. Um, at least like, just like all the country, um, um, all the country consumer in the world, the Vietnam consumer uh, also uh, have to face uh, a peace influence from the COVID-19 crisis. At that time, Vietnam internet users uh, have uh, increased dramatically to the um, 95% uh, and so become the one of the high, highest rate of the new internet user of the country in the Asian. So, you know, uh, when your daily life have to depend on so much on the internet, the, you have to face um, two big issues. This one, face new and face products. Yes, next slide. And at that time, the how, next slide, please. <laughs> and at that time, how the uh, Vietnam's government and the other organization will be help the consumer? Yes, the firstly, um, the Vietnam competition and the consumer authorities or Vietnam Consumer Protection Organization, they mainly reach to the consumer when the consumers, they already get um, the dispute and um, make the claim to them. And uh, so um, very uh, basically, so um, the secondly, um, uh, in crisis, uh, crisis um, Vietnam's government uh, like uh, ministries of health or a ministry of information technology, they send more, much more information to the consumer through the many channels, but just uh, focus on the uh, pandemic information and the government regulation. It's, uh, um, it's not enough to uh, teach the consumers how to can them protect themselves. And for me, and um, beside the, the ministries of the information technology uh, also try to prevent the fake news in the society, uh, society, society network. But uh, absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely, of course, it's very difficult to can deal with this problem. Absolutely. So, next, next. Yeah. So, uh, so far, I uh, agree that Vietnam should um, have more emphasis on the educating consumers. Um, especially in the, the crisis uh, and crisis like the COVID-19 or in the um, development of the digital technologies like right now. And, um, but it's, it's not the easy work, especially now when uh, uh, Vietnam, in Vietnam, there are no the formal uh, consumer education program in school or uh, even in university. So we choose more uh, focus and uh, more so how to can address that the purpose of the consumer education is um, teach the consumers how they can uh, protect themselves, how they can uh, make the suitable choice to can deal with their 
problem by themselves, in especially in the crisis. Yes, um, um, by that way, um, um, the in official yeah, information applied by the authorities, uh, it should be more updated and attest with the consumer um, at the time that's my, that them can be more reliable in the uh, official information and uh, we can attest and when they in, in the emergency case, they can find the right information. Um, um, furthermore, the improve the legal control mechanism in the uh, emissions uh, com in commerce is the answer is a necessary one too. And but now um, uh, in Vietnam, it have a lot of problem want to deal with in this problem, this, this case. And as well as uh, we need more the consumer and the the next group to can um, have the consumer um, to can um, more activities or the more um, program to educate them to can the um, and help them to can the, deal with the, their case. But now in Vietnam, the, the consumer and the, uh, NGO, uh, NGA, NGO is very, um, a few number. It's like the Vina Task, or I think in the future, I hope that the, um, some uh, NGO uh, to uh, mentally protect the consumer will be more uh, can show their role to can have the consumer from the social resource. Thank you. This is just my presentation. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much, Dr. One. Lastly, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Kabe to make some comment based on the presentations. Yes, thank you very much. I would like to say something. Yes, depending on the uh, countries, uh, yes, there may be something uh, you have to do to legislate the necessary uh, laws and regulations for uh, consumer uh, education. And uh, some other countries, uh, they may be a little bit uh, ahead of others. But uh, information provision is particularly important in this kind of uh, COVID-19 crisis that is uh, pointed out by multiple uh, panelists. Yes, uh, consumer affairs agency, and then the uh, our policy research, uh, for, uh, sorry, uh, the consumer policy center, uh, they are doing a lot of things. And then the reliable information is uh, very important. And using of uh, SNS, uh, social media uh, to send out information. Yes, that is uh, very important. Yes, I agree. And uh, we have, uh, they, uh, we feel the similar challenges in Japan as well. Well, well, I simply think that's all what I wanted to say. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kusakabe. I would like to some thing uh, to wrap up this session. As I said at the beginning, yes, uh, a symposium. I hope uh, this one. Uh, may make the first uh, step uh, to uh, promote uh, consumer uh, education in Japan and other countries. And uh, yes, I agree. I just uh, 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 I feel more confident that that is a correct concept based on the presentations uh, just done by other panelists. So that's all. And I would like to finish this session with that remark. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's all about the panel, uh, part one of the panel discussion. Thank you very much. All. We now like to begin session two panel discussion. Consumer complaints trend in the age of COVID-19. How consumer authorities better address them through consultation? This is the topic of the panel discussion too. Let me introduce the panelists. The first panelist is Ms. Noriko Kawaguchi, Executive Vice President of National Consumer Affairs Center of Japan. 
Joining us online are from the Philippines, Attorney Ruth Castello, Under Secretary, Consumer Protection Group, Department of Trade and Industry. Good afternoon from the Philippines. From Thailand, Ms. Wimarat Wim Tariya Pirom, Director of International Cooperation Section, Office of Consumer Protection Board. From Vietnam, Mr. Pham Huang Long and Ms. Wang Big Thuy from Ministry of Industry and Trade. Reaching everybody. Uh, my name is Long from the uh, Consumer Protection Division and the Center for Information and Technology and Training. And next to me is my colleagues from uh, the Consumer Protection Division, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Thuy. モデレーターは消費者庁新未来創造戦略本部総括室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室室
just uh, uh, collect uh, this kind of information and uh, provide advice or recommendations to the consumers. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, they may refer uh, the complaining consumers uh, to the higher level of uh, organization. And then uh, the number of consumer affairs consultants uh, that I indicated the right at the bottom, more than 3,000 uh, consultants or uh, staff is working. And next page. And uh, here, uh, this one is the uh, mechanism or organization of uh, consumer administration. Well, the time is uh, limited, and then there may be some overlap uh, to the other presentation, so I don't want to get into the details, but uh, uh, there is something I would like to particularly focus here. Uh, the information uh, quality and the quantity, yes, there may be a uh, bigger gap between the consumers and uh, our business entities, uh, particularly if a consumer would like to uh, sue uh, the uh, business entities that may be a very expensive and time-consuming. And even each specific uh, case is uh, solved, uh, then that doesn't mean that all the, uh, 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 the issues or particular issues is not uh, yet uh, solved. So there is some special mechanism on that. So that is about uh, our qualified consumer organizations. So that means the bottom part of the slide particularly the mid-bottom part of the slide. So uh, this is the system we have in Japan, qualified consumer organizations. Uh, for example, if the consumers approach uh, wrongfully, uh, particularly uh, um, for car products or other products, uh, then uh, that the mechanism uh, to just uh, uh, recover uh, the damages collectively, uh, that kind of a mechanism will uh, just will be triggered based on the complaints uh, from our consumers. And the third page, yeah, this is about the new consultation service we are now thinking about. A strategic uh, headquarters. Uh, just uh, doing this kind of a field work or a field test. And the left part, uh, box one, the first one is the use of SNS. With increasing uh, use of SNS, particularly the younger people don't like to use the telephone. And uh, that is indicated more in detail on that right hand side. So telephone, telephone is not a communication tool anymore for younger people. They would like to use social media. And the second one, that is uh, the number of consumer consultation cases uh, from younger people is declining. And then when you look at the right hand chart, as you see here, yes, in different generations, the population is not the same for different uh, age uh, generations. So this is uh, just uh, summarized in terms of the number of consumer consultation cases by age per 10,000 people. So even uh, in this kind of data, as you see here, uh, the uh, cases of the complaint from uh, 40 years old uh, or younger than our uh, 40s, that is declining. And then also, as discussed already, uh, from 2022, the uh, age of adulthood is uh, just uh, set at uh, uh, 18 years old, not 20 anymore. So that means we need to prepare against the uh, increasing number of uh, cons consumer troubles, particularly from 18 uh, to 19 years old uh, people. So perhaps we can do something to prevent uh, troubles related to the consumption and uh, recover uh, the damage. Uh, uh, one, I think we do uh, for the purpose is the field test uh, with CNS. So using uh, CNS, SNS, particularly at the, uh, a smartphone app line, is used to receive and respond to uh, the con uh, consumer uh, just uh, complaints. Actually, uh, we have studied this kind of uh, field test in the limited uh, locations. And then based on the result of this kind of field test, perhaps we can come up with the uh, instructions or a kind of a manual as how to just uh, uh, provide uh, education, sorry, provide a consumer uh, complaint. Uh, complaining, uh, sorry, consumer uh, complaint uh, services. Or, uh, 
And that's all about my presentation. And I would like to just ask the panelists to make a presentation in order. First one is uh, uh, Ms. Kawaguchi, National Consumer Affairs Center. Yes, thank you very much. My name is uh, uh, Noriko Kawaguchi, National Consumer Affairs Center. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to make a presentation in front of you. Uh, here, uh, this is the title of my presentation, The Trend in Consumer Consultation uh, in a COVID-19 Crisis. Here, yeah, uh, this is the total number of uh, consumer complaints over uh, years. 2003 and 2004, uh, there was uh, some increased number of uh, complaints about the fictitious uh, invoices or complaints. And then 192,000 cases, that was the peak. And after that, there was a declining trend. And then uh, 93,500 in 2019. And then uh, that is uh, just uh, lower than the previous year. And uh, here, uh, now the people are just uh, doing a kind of a new style of consumption because of the uh, COVID-19. A crisis, and then as a result of that, uh, the number of uh, internet or online shopping travel is in increasing. And then, uh, as of 2021, January, uh, the rate is about 30 percent health related to the product of uh, cosmetics. And then uh, the advertisement to say that is uh, cheaper uh, than uh, the physical uh, purchase. However, uh, sometimes that is associated with the repeated the purchases or sub subscription causing a serious uh, trouble. Some minors are involved in this as well. Uh, the, uh, the clothes or uh, shoes or bags and others. Sometimes uh, they uh, cannot uh, just have uh, get a product even uh, after they ordered and then uh, all uh, they get is only defective products or copy products. And uh, uh, there are uh, some uh, other health-related product uh, problems as well, such as the face masks and uh, the thermometers and uh, sanitization products. Uh, sometimes these products are too much expensive, and then quality is not uh, good enough, and then uh, they cannot uh, just uh, um, fulfill uh, the order. And that kind of a complaint just comes one after another. And then uh, soon after this one, the number, a total number of the COVID-19 related uh, cons consumer complaints uh, just uh, becoming lower. And also uh, movie broadcasting and uh, digital content, the service related uh, contract to television has been reported as well. Smartphone or online games, yes, that is also reported in terms of the trouble. And then to a uh, thousand or so, some child uh, just uh, used uh, uh, online uh, games uh, without knowing uh, the actual uh, charges, and uh, the charge it just uh, became uh, uh, very high. Particularly in this uh, COVID-19 crisis, many uh, children just uh, stayed at home and then play online, and uh, that may cause uh, some troubles, particularly online games and uh, other things. And the next one is uh, uh, just an uh, overview of the consumption uh, consultation. According to the Pioneer System data, 2020 January to 2021 February, here, this is the number of uh, cases, and then the total is 87,000 or so. And then 2020 April, uh, the number of complaints uh, was more than uh, 20,000, but now it is, uh, that is about uh, uh, 3,000. That is a uh, complaint uh, related to the COVID-19. And in addition to the face masks and others, uh, there is uh, some troubles uh, reported, uh, particularly uh, with uh, or for uh, tra travel uh, cancellation, uh, accommodation, or uh, 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 flight. Um, uh, cancels. And then also wedding and the special event, uh, the cancellation troubles are uh, reported many. And in 2020, uh, March, uh, toilet walls, and then uh, sanitizers and the thermometers, uh, they are in shortage, and uh, there are increasing number of uh, complaints on these uh, things. And then particularly the disinfectants, uh, there is some inquiries about the information uh, of the label. And uh, we just uh, checked the uh, actual concentration of ethanol of this uh, product and responded to these complaints. And then 2021 and uh, January and after that, 
Both oximeters uh, uh, inquiry or complaints increase uh, suddenly. And then uh, sometimes uh, in this kind of uh, COVID-19 crisis, uh, uh, there was a kind of uh, uh, quite a fraudulent uh, business uh, increase as well in order to just uh, steal the uh, ID information and others. And also, uh, there was a kind of a flash report or alert about the frozen businesses, actually eight uh, uh, times of alert and other uh, uh, a number of recommendations and instructions uh, are spread out. And uh, uh, there is some uh, complaints or consultations about uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccine uh, development, uh, vaccine development, uh, particularly R&D or vaccine investment, and that kind of uh, uh, issues are uh, coming uh, out uh, under this kind of uh, corona or COVID-19 crisis. And then, of course, uh, we just uh, watch what's happening in the uh, actual consumption uh, situation, and then uh, just uh, provide the necessary uh, advice or suggestion. That's all. Next, I'd like to invite Dr. Otoni Castello from the Philippines. Okay, uh, hello, afternoon from the Philippines. I would like to share with you uh, complaints handling and how we do it in the Philippines. Um, if you can see the slide. If I may share, may, if I may have the slides, please. Okay, so you will see there um, where and how does the government receive consumer complaints? You will see that um, because of the pandemic, uh, first, uh, first you will see that we, we have our complaint site in the Department of Trade and Industry website. Um, there is a procedure on how to file the complaint. We accept complaints whether they are filed through walk-in complainants or if they are sent via email. We can also accept them if they are uh, sent through the DTI Consumer Hotline 1384 or if they are sent through the through te through SMS. Uh, we also have a, a cell phone number dedicated for SMS for complaints and as well as the official consumer complaints email address. And you will see also that due to the limitations on physical movement because of uh, people's fear of getting infected, more and more Filipinos now um, resort to digital channels to conduct their transactions. And therefore, because e-commerce uh, is on the rise in the Philippines, we have also shifted to adopting receiving complaints via uh, the digital system as well. If the complaints are not within the jurisdiction of the Department of Trade and Industry, we endorse them to appropriate government agencies and uh, we follow up with them as well. Um, we have over the years since 2019, um, an increase by about 600% of complaints received by the DTI Consumer Protection Group through the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau. In 2019, we only have less than uh, 11,000. In 2020, we have almost 60,000. And from January to March of this year, we have already received um, almost 8,000 complaints. In the next slide, you will see the kinds of complaints that we have been receiving at the height of COVID-19. The first, uh, the highest number of complaints that we have received is for deceptive, unfair, or unconscionable sales act or practice. Which is, viol which, is, um, uh, which is a violation of the Consumer Act of the Philippines. The second one, the second number, the second highest number of complaints that we have received is for liability for product and service imperfection. And the third, uh, you will see poor internet connection as what you have seen today. So on the next slide, you will see how DTI consumer, uh, the Consumer Protection Group handles complaints uh, consumer complaints filed with us. They can file it. I, I mentioned earlier that they can be filed through the Consumer Care Hotline 1384 or our email address. They can also use the snail mail, the postal mail. Uh, hard copies are also received in the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau or via SMS. And then um, the complaints go through the process of mediation. 
if it can be settled immediately between the parties. Um, there is a mediation officer assigned to the case. And then if this does not, if, if it is not successfully resolved through mediation, we go through the adjudication process. So also redress under the e-commerce act, uh, uh, under the E-Commerce Act of the Philippines, we have internal complaints handling and then the filing of consumer complaints before any government, uh, the appropriate government agency. In this case, it is the Department of Information and Management Technology. We have a DICT for that. Or the filing of consumer complaints before the Philippine trade officers across the globe. Uh, we have consular offices in the in the Philippine embassies in in a number of posts across the globe. Um, right now, I'd like to mention that the ASEAN Committee on Consumer Protection is also in the process of doing the online dispute resolution system. This is a cross-border dispute there's resolution system that we hope in the ASEAN that will be done soon. In the Philippines, we are already setting up, in the process of setting up our Philippine online dispute resolution system. And once we are done, we can go on board with the ASEAN. This is how, in the next slide, you will see how consumer complaints are handled in the Philippines. When a complaint is filed, either in uh, through walk-in or via phone or SMS, email or uh, post mail or the consumer at IBAPA, this is, KATBP, you will see here on the left-hand portion of the slide, of the screen, uh, that's um, an, an, an advocacy program of the DTI Consumer Protection Group uh, via TV and radio. So we acknowledge and evaluate the complaint. And then if there is DTI uh, jurisdiction, uh, we go through mediation. And then if it's not settled, we go through the adjudication process. The complainant or the uh, the respondent, either party who is who is not um, happy with the decision, may file an appeal before the office of the secretary of the Department of Trade and Industry. And then you will see also that if DTI does not have jurisdiction, we endorse the same to the appropriate government agency, and then we follow through. We have regional and provincial offices also around the country. So um, they also have jurisdiction. If the incident happened within their jurisdiction, they will have to settle the complaint in behalf of the consumer. In the next slide, you will see uh, ways moving forward on how we can improve the system of handling consumer complaints. We use a lot of social, uh, social media. We have them in Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Anyone, even those outside the Philippines can search our pages. Uh, they are called consumer care um, pages in social media. So the use of social networking sites is also, well, has become very important for us, uh, for, for the consumers in reaching out to the department. We also need to increase, because of the incre continuing increase of uh, consumer transactions, especially at the height of the pandemic, we also need to increase manpower, uh, handling consumer com complaints in the consumer protection group of the department. We are also currently developing the database management system, especially of all online transactions, so that we would know where to reach them, how to find them, and how to be able to send them notices in case any consumer has filed a complaint against them. This is also um, an instrument for us to make it easier for the consumer to um, reach out and be able to resolve their issues against any uh, business. So that is all for the Department of Trade and Industry Philippines. This is how we do and uh, how this is how we address consumer complaints. Uh, thank you very much. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay. Castelo-san, arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you very much, Ms. Castello. Next one is uh, uh, Ms. Wim from Thailand, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Wim from Office of the Consumer Protection Board, Thailand. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Firstly, I'd like, yes, this slide. Firstly, I'd like to share the categories of complaint which OCPB received from 2020 when 
the COVID-19 pandemic situation happened in Thailand until now. We got a sign from the government to receive all types of complaints to support the suffering people. And then we forward the complaint, which is not under our authority, to the other agency. And it's like uh, it showed the complaint on e-commerce room rental contract product standard, which the general contract all services contract, defective product, get injured from the beauty clinic, high purchase, dispute on the property case, just like the problem from infrastructure of the building, and safe product and, uh, and transportation. Then we forward the case of product standard and the professional services of beauty clinic to the other agency and do all the case which are the consumer protection law and direct sales and direct marketing act. Next slide, please. As everyone know about the COVID-19 pandemic situation since January last year, I'd like to show the top five statistics of complaints during this difficult situation. After the government announced the closure of cross-country travel, we received a large amount of cases that consumers did not get refund of canceling flights from the airlines and travel agents. The number of complaints on refunding the flight tickets is 1,302 cases. At a second, um, sorry. Yes, and a second. It's about a travel agency. We will receive the case is, is too much if we compare to the last year. It's complaint on canceling the tour package, which is 311 cases. And the third is canceling the condominium contract, which is affected from the unemployed consumers during the COVID-19 situation. And the fourth is the dispute on goods and services, such as um, consumer receive the goods later than identified in their contract. And the fifth is um, concerning airlines change or cancel the flight without a uh, prior notice. Next slide, please. OCPB has the authority to receive all the complaints from consumers and tag them to the redress process, included online dispute resolution, which uh, we activated since 2019. But the difficulty is when consumers buy air tickets from unregistered foreign agent in Thailand, we cannot enforce this agent with Consumer Protection Act. However, we're trying to contact the registered country to help our consumers, um, fortunately. Hong Kong is the best friend who helps us a lot. The Hong Kong Consumer Council helps our consumers more than 70 k We think the best way to resolve this problem is uh, collaboration between agencies and also between countries. And educated people is very important to reduce the complaint to be zero. Next slide, please. This slide, I'd like to show the case study, which is Difficulty case. Uh, we received a complaint from foreigner who stay in Thailand to short time. He bought a ticket from an unregistered agent who sells air ticket on marketplace. After the international travel closed, the airlines canceled all flights and refund the consumer through agent. But the agent has not refunded this money to the consumer. And now the agent has taken it off the marketplace already. So it is too difficult to verify due to the market register in other country. Sometimes we, ha we have to contact to um, just like Japan, Korea. Uh, we contact to KCA Korea. We contact to NCIC of Japan to help our people. So it's all of my slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Swim. We'd like to now invite uh, Mr. Vaughan and Ms. Thuy from Vietnam. Greeting, greeting everybody. Uh, my name is Long from the VCCA. Um, I would like to start my uh, presentation by thanking the organization for inviting us to uh, be a part of uh, today's uh, online conference. 
Um, as you may aware, the law on uh, protection of consumer interests or consumer protection law of Vietnam has became in force in 2011. And since then, we have developed a consumer hotline where we can uh, help the consumer and support the consumer for, to file the complaints and educate the consumer um, in terms of uh, regulation, regulation uh, related to the consumer protection um, in Vietnam. And in 2015, we have um, uh, upgrade our system into a calling center and a free national tone free number 1-800-6838. The 6838 stands for the Vietnamese consumer in Vietnamese. So if you look at the keyboard on the on your phone, you can type in the ND and TDV, is which translate roughly into Vietnamese consumer in English. And since 2019, we have also made another upgrade where it became a national wide consumer hotline and the national database on consumer to further support the consumer of Vietnam and it integrated further into the business community as well as open to the world and other uh, government agencies and consumer protection association around the world um, to join us at this system. Mm -hmm. Can I have the next slide, please? The aim and objective of this system is to provide one of solution to handle the consumer complaints from the central government to the local government. As you may aware, Vietnam is a, why, uh, is a long country, is uh, expressed all the way from the north to the south. We have three, cent, uh, three provinces, uh, three big uh, parts, is the northern part, the central part, and the southern part, where we have 63 provinces. Um, the representative of the consumer protection uh, government agencies in these provinces is called the Department of Industry and Trade. And we also have the NGO as well, the Consumer Association. Right now in Vietnam, we have 57 consumer protection association joining us to further support and handle the consumer complaints. So when we be trying to build this system, is we try, trying to help the consumer to have just one portal in together to support and to have to receive the complaints. The consumer now they have multiple methods for the consumer and channel for the to uh, for us to receive the complaint from the consumer. So that the consumer can go to the our Facebook website, our Facebook page, the YouTube channel or the website or the one of the next year we will implement a, a social um, um, messaging service as well is called Zalo in Vietnam. And we also have provide Viber number so the consumer can text us to update the complaints. We also, next year, we also apply the AI system to further answer the question from the consumer uh, better. It's also provide a common database system and unify consultation process for the consumer national wide. Because each of the province have the, the difficulties and as well the support from uh, various level of support from the, uh, from the um, uh, local government. So that's why we want trying to unify the system so the consumer will face the same uh, have, we have received the same level of uh, support from any part of the government of Vietnam. It's also contribute to improving and promoting the effectiveness of consulting and resolving the consumer complaints national wide. It also ensure the participation of officials of the Association of the Protection of Rights of the Consumer, the Department of Industry and Trade in consulting and assisting the consumer, also encourage and facilitate the connection between the state agencies, organization, participating in the protection of consumer interests. We, just like um, our colleagues in Philippines, as well as uh, Mr. Muro Fushi from the CCA, uh, we, our system is very similar to the Pionet in the Japan, where we connect not only the, the, the agency, who, the government agency, who is in charge of the consumer protection. We also want to connect to other um, agency as well, such as the Ministry of Transportation, the um, Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Police, where if we receive any cases, from any other um, ministry, we also put public into this system um, so we can have a, a prediction of any harmful uh, product might cause to the consumer. Um, next slide, please. And uh, it, which in 2020, as you can see on the uh, slide here, the transportation service and vehicle is the most active case 
uh, that we received is nearly 50% of the total case we received in 2020. Most of the cases were because of the lockdown of the COVID-19 pandemics around the world. A lot of consumers have purchased their tickets in advance and because of the lockdown, they cannot uh, have they cannot fly to another country or maybe domestically fly. They have to ask the, um, the, the airliner to refund to them. But the, uh, but the information given out by the airliner in terms of the time and date that the consumer will receive the refund is not clear. So that's why we received a number of complaints, nearly 4,000 complaints from the consumer in terms of the, the negotiation, uh, sorry, transport service. We have been working closely with the business in the business and enterprises in the area of transportation, such as airliner like Vietnam Airlines or Zestar Pacific or Vietjet. So that's the, when they given out the information, they have to give out the clearly the number of days before the con, um, that those days that the consumer might receive the the refund. So the second the second number of uh, complaint we also receive is finance, insurance, and banking. It's most of the cases is related to the um, to this part is being handled by negotiation. Um, in the process of handling the complaint in Vietnam, under the Consumer Protection Law of Vietnam, we had four official methods. The first method is negotiation, the second method is mediation, the third method is arbitration, and the fourth method is court. We encourage the consumer and business to do the negotiation before going to mediation, but anytime the, uh, the consumer can choose any of those uh, methods to, to handle their complaints. May I have the next slide, please? Also, I was talking about the total number calls to the hotline one hundred and six eight three eight. As you can see, in two thousand eleven is when the consumer protection law of Vietnam came into effect. We only received twenty six calls. In two thousand twelve, it went two hundred and sixty three, and it's going up on the way. In two thousand and seventeen, the number of calls dropped dramatically since 2016 because we have uh, put an effort to upgrade our system. During that time, it's a lot of the calls have been dropped and we have not been able to fully um, report the true number of the system. Uh, since, 2000, uh, since the upgrade in 2017, we also uh, in 2018, 19 and 20, we received a dramatic increase a in number of calls. All of the call is being um, recorded, translated in by voice to sex, uh, voice to sex system and technology. We also provide tune and measure to the uh, central government as well as the local government official for them to join the system and to consult the, uh, the consumer. Whenever the consumer belongs to any of the provinces, we try to direct the consumer to the province, such provinces cons, uh, consultation official so they can have a better understand, uh, understanding of the system. Um, right now, the system is uh, being further upgraded. Um, we also want to um, take this opportunity to invite uh, our colleagues from other um, government agency and consumer association to connect with us with the system where we can have further in import of the consumer complaints from other country. Such as um, uh, in the last few years, we received a few hundred cases from the um, consumer, uh, consumer agency in uh, Korea, as well as in Australia, as well in Singapore, where they uh, can forward us uh, the complaints of the consumer. Um, where it is very difficult for you as a foreign uh, um, agency to contact the business in Vietnam to handle the complaints. We will receive the complaint. Um, everything is confidential and we will forward the complaint to the businesses, handle the complaints and get back to you in one system. Uh, I think that is, um, the, that is my uh, last slide for this presentation. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lon. So we have received the presentations, and then for the rest of the time, we would like to have a more specific discussion. First of all, yes, uh, there are uh, some an increase uh, of the number of complaints under this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Uh, for example, Vietnam and uh, Philippines well, the total number of complaints seems to be increasing particularly. And then uh, in Philippines, according to Mr. Castello, Cast, uh, sorry, Ms. Uh, Castello, yes, human resources, uh, that is another uh, challenge. 
So uh, the uh, total complaints is increasing in number in a COVID-19 crisis. So how is the availability of resources? Is it good enough or not good enough? Uh, if there is a shortage of resources, though, uh, how uh, would you like to, or how did you do uh, without the shortage? Uh, Philippines and uh, uh, Vietnam. And in, in Japan and the Thailand, um, uh, there is some information about the contents of the complaint. But uh, what is the current situation about the uh, total number of complaints in these two countries? Uh, first, uh, Kawagu Ms. Kawaguchi, please. Well, uh, in Japan, yes, we are now in uh, COVID-19 crisis. And uh, I just uh, talked about the specific corona, uh, COVID-19 specifically related uh, complaints in my presentation. When you look at the total number, uh, 930,000 in 2019 and in a fiscal year, and the 2020 fiscal year, as of, as of end of uh, February, that is about uh, 800,000. I think that is almost uh, same or similar to the previous year. So in total, yes, perhaps the total number uh, maybe are not so much changed from the previous year. Thank you very much. And uh, next, I would like to uh, ask uh, uh, Ms. Wim, uh, Thailand, uh, could you uh, share your uh, just uh, statistics, uh, the total number of complaints in the country? Thank you very much for your question. Um, I show in the slide, I show only the top five statistics of complaints. But the totally complaints um, last year, uh, if we prepare from 2019, it's grow up around um, 30 percent because in 2019 the totally complaints is around 13,000 cases. But last year it's grow up to be uh, 19,000 cases. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next uh, Philippine, uh, Ms. Castelo. In your country, uh, 19, 2019 to 2020 and 2021, yes, I think you said that uh, the number, total number of complaints is increasing rapidly. So how about the uh, resources in order to respond to these increased number of complaints? And uh, have you done anything uh, specifically to cope with this number of complaints? Oh, yes. As I mentioned earlier, the number of complaints received increased by around 600 percent from 2019 to 2020. So as soon as um, work was allowed in the Philippines, as soon as we have started opening up the offices, government offices included, uh, we had to immediately hire uh, additional personnel to help us cope with the increasing number of consumer complaints. Now from Vietnam, Mr. Long, can you explain how are you going to deal with the increasing number of the complaints? So in Vietnam, uh, in order for us to dealing with the high number of complaints, especially during the COVID-19, we're trying to educate the consumer instead of like, trying to handle the case by case. Because in Vietnam, we have a population of 98 million. If all 98 million people is going to complain at the at one time, we will not be able to handle all of the complaints. So we try to public out the information as much as possible on how the consumer can protect themselves. Such as when they make the complaint for the airliner, uh, they should get the information clearly. And when you can receive the money back from the, uh, from the airline and how much money is being deducted. Uh, such of the information we public out on all of our channel, on Facebook, on YouTube, we provide video uh, video um, uh, guidance as well, as well as the animation for the consumer so they can see. We also public the news on the, our website. Uh, we cooperate with other news agencies to public the information as well. Uh, and furthermore, we also um, develop, um, we also uh, have uh, been uh, enforced a task force for the consumer handling con con uh, consumer complaints handling as well. Uh, so that seems to be easier and better for the consumer. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you very much. The next point we'd like to discuss is, as I mentioned in my presentation, when you have aged people, older people, or instead of young people, you mentioned, and I mentioned that will not make phone calls for consultation. On the other hand, older people have difficulty using SNS. They would prefer face-to-face -face complaint submission and phone calls. So on the other hand, younger people are vulnerable, and younger people and older people are also vulnerable. So what do you do with the elderly people and the younger people? to provide information and consultation advice. Do you have particular emphasis on what you do for the elderly and the younger people who are vulnerable? For example, here in Japan, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, for the younger people, we introduce SNS so that they can reach us easily. Whereas in case of older people, we have the monitoring network. So locally, we set up a system to protect the elderly consumers. So we have the vulnerable population, namely the younger and the older. And what do you do in particular to these vulnerable people for consultation, starting with Ms. Kawaguchi? Yes, thank you very much for your question. Yes, nowadays, uh, Internet and SNN, yes, um, with respect, without respect to any age group, the uh, number of uh, troubles on SNS or Internet, that is increasing. So SN and uh, uh, website, yes, that is also a very good uh, just uh, information method or the method to spread out the information on the consumption. In 2022, yes, we're going to reduce the age of adulthood. So we would like to just uh, uh, working on the information provision, particularly with a focus on a new adult. And then uh, sometimes we work together with uh, comic authors uh, and then just uh, put that uh, information on the Twitters and the others, and uh, particularly uh, the web media, we would like to talk with them uh, to just uh, send out information with a focus on these young people. I think that uh, actually that is one of the things we did, and that was very effective, and that worked out. That is our impression. And uh, younger uh, people, particularly, they don't like to read books or very detailed texts. Uh, but uh, still, we would like to come up with an uh, uh, optimal way to send out information. And then, uh, of course, we need to be involved in the, uh, particularly the field uh, with the many younger people are just uh, working there. And then for elderly people as well? Yes. Uh, about uh, older people or uh, just uh, uh, physically or mentally impaired people, yes, we do some um, information provision, particularly uh, kind of a monitoring or watching uh, information prov provision. And then particularly they are vulnerable to the um, just wrongful or uh, fraudulent businesses. And uh, we sent out a kind of mail magazine to them, particularly to uh, the, uh, these elderly people uh, and then with their families. And there uh, are 29 times 2019 uh, fiscal years. And then also uh, child uh, uh, support. Uh, the 14 times in the fiscal 2019, we just sent out the kind of booklet and then uh, uh, brochures to them. And then leaflet uh, may be quite convenient uh, for them as well, I believe. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the next is uh, Philippine. Ms. Castello, could you make some comments on uh, what would you like to do, particularly for elderly people and young people in your country? Oh, yes. In the Philippines, especially during the pandemic, uh, young people and older people are discouraged to go out uh, so that we have made um, a dedicated phone line for them to call in case they want to file a consumer complaint. We also have SMS uh, numbers dedicated for them. And we also have a TV, I mentioned this earlier, a TV and radio, tele, uh, both TV, simultaneous TV and radio program. Uh, that they can call so that um, they would be able to reach out to us easier for any consumer complaint. We also have had 
uh, issued a lot of memorandum circulars from the department guiding both business and consumer as to how to handle uh, difficulties or challenges, especially at the height of the pandemic. Thank you very much. And now, uh, Ms. Wim from Thailand. What do you do particularly for the younger people and elderly people? If you have any measures, please let us know. For Thailand, we don't have any problem. Uh, we don't have too much problem with the younger people because uh, we have a unit in OCPB who collaborate with the Ministry of Education to um, launch another project to um, establish the club for consumer kids. But we have problem with the elderly people and some who live in the province because elderly people in Thailand, most of them cannot use internet, most of them cannot use a cell phone with a smartphone. But some kinds of our service we launch on cell phones. So it's too hard to connect them, it's too hard to educate them. But we try to collaborate with the other agency to go to the rural, or go to the province and send some kinds of information, useful things, useful documents to them. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next, uh, Mr. Lon and Ms. Thuy from the Vietnam. For this matter, I will turn from uh, the question and answer to Ms. Thuy. Good afternoon. Um, for elder people and younger people in Vietnam, we regard them as a vulnerable people. And um, uh, the consumer protection uh, is here in Vietnam. We aim to protect both the vulnerable people as well. Um, and um, to um, um, advocacy uh, the awareness of the um, of this group of people, we uh, try to in, um, implement some activities in order to focus on them. Uh, especially for younger people, we try to uh, protect them uh, through their education at the school and then uh, in the future, in the near future, we're trying to um, build up and develop some uh, program to um, advocate their education and awareness um, on the consumer protection. And for elder people, we, we have um, been cooperating with um, the national uh, consumer associations in Vietnam um, to to have them to promote the activities to the elder people and as well as to have uh, the elder people can uh, be participate in our activity in order to promote their activities in uh, consumer protection here in Vietnam. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, the time is uh, limited. Uh, so running out, so based on the discussion, I would like to ask Mr. Sakabe to make some comments. Yes, what kind of complaints are there reported in COVID-19 crisis? There may be some similarity, cancellation of a flight ticket and the cancellation of travel. Yes, that is a serious trouble in Japan. And then it, that seems to be the same in other uh, Southeast Asian countries, I believe. And then uh, in terms of the total number of uh, complaints, well, it may be not a good idea to make a simple comparison among different countries, but uh, uh, it seems that in some countries uh, there is uh, just a, a quite a high number of COVID-19 related uh, uh, complaints and uh, one of such countries in Japan, so there may be some similarities. And uh, as discussed before, uh, how to do with the complaints, particularly from uh, young people, actually the SNS, uh, that is uh, playing a very important role, that is uh, uh, the same uh, in Japan. Yes, uh, they don't want to use the uh, telephone, they don't want to contact anybody who are a strange, strangers. So SNS may be a good method to uh, collect or respond information. Yes, but still, we are still at the try and error stage. And for elderly people, or old people, yes, uh, monitoring, that is uh, one uh, method. But uh, generally speaking, particularly, uh, there is no um, uh, special uh, population uh, focused uh, alarm a lot or information provision. Uh, we just uh, aim uh, to reach out all the populations with information uh, provision. And then uh, if it is necessary, the uh, regulatory authorities uh, may need to uh, be get involved. 
And uh, yes, uh, even if you look at the uh, older uh, population, some people are, are quite accessible uh, to the internet, others are sometimes uh, dem dementia and then uh, difficult to uh, just to, uh, uh, use the internet. But still, uh, we need to be with them and uh, watch them uh, or the association. And that is uh, one of the things we do. And there is a network uh, of uh, caregivers of these people or their families. And so they need to have a higher or more sensitive antenna for uh, consumer or consumption uh, uh, problems. And for example, uh, in our local communities, if uh, uh, one of your neighbor is very old and uh, something uh, seems to be happening, uh, then you need to just uh, contact the necessary office to try to check and uh, do with the problem if uh, there is. That is one thing we can do. But uh, still, the network is not yet uh, well working in uh, all over Japan, so uh, that is uh, still a challenge uh, to us. And uh, we are still working on that, uh, how to solve that kind of problem. Uh, so, uh, well, perhaps uh, Japan may be um, ahead of other uh, countries in terms of the aging of the society, but uh, if uh, there is uh, any good idea in your countries, I appreciate your sharing information. Perhaps uh, next uh, opportunity, uh, we can share our experience and uh, knowledge. But uh, anyway, it seems that uh, uh, we are just uh, handling the similar types of complaints in different countries, and that is my impression. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have lots of discussion, but we only have a few moments, so it is time for me to wrap up this uh, session. We had the topic of how we are to deal with the complaints uh, in the age of COVID-19. As Mr. Kusakabe uh, mentioned, uh, we have some similar challenges among the participants and uh, there is some similar topics in which we have more complaints and uh, some people in some countries are increasing the number of human resources uh, with the lockdown and limitation of the uh, travel you also need to have more digitalization this is i think a common challenge consumer consultation center needs to enhance itself and the use of a database and development of database has also been mentioned uh, here in japan we have a pioneer this is a nationwide uh, a database uh, this is uh, perhaps uh, one area where we can work together among the participants in asia and uh, other thing that i can say is that how we are to deal with the elderly population uh, personally i have spent three years in, in thailand and I made some search and uh, analysis of the conditions in Southeast Asia. Uh, the countries are uh, seeing more and more aging population. And as was uh, mentioned, uh, we have the special uh, network for monitoring uh, the elderly people to meet the society uh, in aging. And the local people, the rural people in the rural villages uh, who are getting old and uh, need to also uh, be reached out. So if there's anything we can uh, collaborate that, I think is a good uh, opportunity. Uh, though the, uh, since the time is up, we need to at this point to conclude our panel discussion number two. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, this is at uh, the end of uh, session two, a panel discussion. I'd like to thank all the participants.